Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we're going to talk about reciprocals and specifically learning how to multiply by reciprocals. And the reason we're doing this now is because in the last section we talked about how to multiply numbers, how to multiply real numbers together. And here in a couple of sections we're going to talk about dividing real numbers. Um, so before we get to division, uh, it's helpful to talk about what we call a reciprocal because it kind of leads very nicely into the concept of division. So it's one of those topics along the way that's important, but mostly because it helps us understand division later on. So we have this concept called a reciprocal. So the way you say that is R-E-C-I-P-R-O-C-A-L. This is an A here, A-L. So the reciprocal of, just to give you a couple of examples, of the number 3 is 1 -third. So basically, if you have a whole number and you're trying to take the reciprocal of it, you just take it, stick it on the bottom of the fraction, and it's 1 -third. Um, just another quick example, if you want to take the reciprocal of negative 2, we'll do it like this, the reciprocal is going to be um, 1 over negative 2. So you see how the negative 2, the number that you have in question, just goes on the bottom of the fraction, and the reciprocal is 1 over that number. And uh, a variables work perfectly fine to talk about. If we're going to find the reciprocal of the variable a, we just say it's 1 over a. Now really what's happening with the reciprocal is you're just flipping the fraction over. If you look at all these examples, 3 is really 3 over 1, right? If you think about it, 3 is the same as 3 over 1, right? When you take the reciprocal of that, we'll say r means reciprocal, all you do is you take this fraction here and you flip it over. That's all a reciprocal is doing, so it becomes one-third. That's why the whole numbers like this end up looking like fractions. Um, here, for instance, negative 2 is really negative 2 over 1, and when you take the reciprocal of it, all it means is flip the fraction over so it becomes 1 over negative 2. So if you have a whole number, that's how you find its reciprocal. Um, let's find, uh, do a couple of additional quick examples uh, and show you you know, just to get a little more practice. So if you have the number 7, which really is 7 over 1, you want to find the reciprocal of that guy. It's just 1 seventh. <clears throat> Not too difficult. What if you have the number 1? <clears throat> you want to find the, the reciprocal of the number 1. Um, well, it's just going to be 1 over the number 1. This goes in the denominator. Same as usual. Now here's where it becomes interesting. If you have the number or the fraction 1 over 11 and you're asked to find its reciprocal, what do you do? You just take the fraction and you flip it upside down, um, basically. So it's going to basically become 11 over 1, which is 11. That's the reciprocal. And if you have the fraction negative 2 thirds, see the negative doesn't really matter and you're trying to find its reciprocal, you just flip the fraction over so it becomes negative 3 halves. So you see the concept of a reciprocal is the same no matter if it's a whole number you're talking about or a fraction. It's just all of these whole numbers is written as the whole number over 1. You flip it over, you get the reciprocal. If you start with a fraction, you flip it over. So that's what a reciprocal is. And the reason we're studying it is because you'll find out that reciprocals are really closely tied to division, which we're getting to here in a little bit. All right, so now what, let's take a couple of, uh, uh, of additional problems. So now, instead of just finding the reciprocal, we're going to do something like, what if you have the number 1 sixth and you're multiplying it by 1 tenth? Now, in your books, a lot of time they'll talk about reciprocals and what the concept is, which is what we've just talked about, and then they'll do some quick problems showing you, you know, doing multiplication and such with reciprocals. So these are just fractions. The reciprocal that we're talking about here, all of these, these answers here, they're just fractions, just like any other fraction. And we've done a lot of work with multiplying fractions already. So when you see a problem like this, now you might know that 1 tenth is the reciprocal of 10. You might know that now. But really, when you're doing this operation, it's the same as you've always done. 1 6 times 1 tenth, you multiply the top numbers, giving you 1. You multiply the bottom numbers, giving you 60. So you just kind of perform the operation as usual. Okay? What if we have 3a... Um, times one-third. How do you handle that? Well, don't forget that 3a is really 3a over 1. Anything can be written as itself over 1, and now you're multiplying by one-third. So how do you handle it? You multiply the tops, and you multiply the bottoms. Now, what is 3a times 1? 3a times 1 is just 3a, and 1 times 3 on the bottom is going to give you 3. So this is the answer, but before we finish, we want to see, is this fully simplified? We'll see what we have here is, on the top, we have 3 times a, and on the bottom, we have 3. So what, what this is, is 3 times a divided by 3. 
So you see you have a three on the top and the three on the, vo the bottom, so you can kind of read this as three divided by three is what you have here. So that's going to give you one. So the way that you kind of mark that on your paper is you can strike out the top three and the bottom three because you know they're going to divide out and just give you one. So really the answer is just going to be A. So you know whether or not you write it as 3A divided by 3, that is the answer, or you simplify it to just A, which is also another way to write the answer, these are equivalent things, but this one is simpler. So we always want to write everything down in algebra in the simplest terms. So when we see a three on the top and a three on the bottom and everything's multiplied in the top and then you have a, uh, something, you know, the number on the bottom, you can cancel them out. They're not disappearing, they're really dividing away. Three divided by three giving you one, all you have left is the A. And again, this sort of problem, even though we're talking about reciprocals, is just multiplying by fractions, which is what we've done all along. Now, what if we have negative one-fourth times four times A times B? How do we handle that? You see something like that. Well, you're going to have the negative that's going to stick around there. Uh, and then on the top, you have 1. And then here you have times 4, because what don't forget, 4 can be written as, as 4 over 1. Okay. In fact, I'll do that this one time for you. I'll write, I'm not going to do this all the time, but let me just write this as 4 over 1 times A times B, because any whole number can be written like that. So really what you're going to have is negative 4 on the top because 4 times 1 is 4 and then you'll have another 4 on the bottom. The negative just kind of comes along for the ride. You can just kind of keep it there. But the multiplication of the numbers go like this and then you have uh, a times b. Now how is this going to simplify? Well you have a fraction 4 over 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1 so it just kind of disappears and you're in, you end up with negative a times b. So again I said it disappears. It doesn't really disappear. It's just that 4 divided by 4 gives you 1 so it kind of disappears. So you have negative a times b. All right, next problem. Uh, what if we have 8 times x times y times negative 1 fourth? Again, you're multiplying by a fraction. We call, call it reciprocal. We now know that this fraction, negative 1 fourth, is the reciprocal of the number negative 4. Okay, so again, we're just treating it like a fraction. So how do you handle that? Well, this is going to be really 8 over 1. Here, this is 8 over 1, so you have 8 times 1, and then on the bottom you have 1 times 4. So you can keep the negative out in front, it stays along for the ride. 8 times 1 is 8. Uh, the 1 from the bottom of the 8 over 1 here times the 4 gives us 4. And then you have x, y. And then you try to simplify this. And you say, okay, what is this fraction? 8 fourths. Well, 8 divided by 4 goes evenly, it's 2. The negative stays along for the ride, 2x why that's the final answer okay the only thing you're really doing here is you have to re mentally remember that any whole number is really the number over one so when you're multiplying the fractions it's the top number giving you this and the one on the bottom is times the bottom of the other fraction giving you the four that's the only thing you really have to be concerned with all right now we're going to do our final problem which is going to be 15 times m times n times one fifth same kind of thing. You have a 15 out here, but don't forget that's written as 15 over 1. So we take 15 times 1 to, to multiply the fractions together, giving us 15. And on the bottom, you have an implied 1 down here times the 5, giving you 5. And then you have m n. And you say, is this the final answer? Well, 15 divided by 5, 15 over 5 can divide evenly, giving you 3 times m times n. And that's the final answer. So in this lesson, we just introduce the concept of a reciprocal. Um, you see, we're multiplying by one-fifth. You could think of that as the reciprocal of the number five. Um, and so, you know, it ultimately it just ends up becoming fraction multiplication, which we've studied before. So this, the math that we're doing here is really not really, really much different than what we've done before. We're just calling something, calling it something different and understanding the concept of when you have a number, one over that number is its reciprocal. Or if you have a fraction, you flip it over. Uh, that's its reciprocal. Now we have just a couple more additional problems on this to do, to learn from in this concept, and then we'll be making our way to learning how to divide uh, real numbers in algebra.